The interesting thing about the journey is because, you know, as mentioned, I came to meet you, you yeah. know, in my in my path on the side of, you know, you that's very much on the executive side. You yeah. obviously having artists that you work with and, you know, at the forefront of, of you know, positioning, pushing and, you know, yeah. and uh, I guess promoting in different ways. But this notion or this knowing about your musical, your personal musical background is, you know, something that's new knowledge for me and something yeah. that's very intriguing probably to me. new knowledge for a lot of people <laughs> that watch the watch the episode yeah. no but these are the important parts of the story so how like how did you treat that because you know obviously especially you say after you started so good you said that was oh nine right you there was obviously this push kind of they said some some have greatness thrust upon them yeah. <laughs> you know so for you it's kind of like you know a man of the peoples as it were where there was kind of a push to you know, to seek out your leadership. How how then did you handle the whole, your your personal kind of passions for the music? Did you say, you know, did you have to make some executive decision and say, okay, it's not about my music anymore. I'm like, now I'm kind of a leader. So I'm parking what I was doing or how, how did you juggle? Because I know, you know, I had a similar discussion with Holstar, for example, who yeah. spoke about how it was for him having a, been an artist. And then all of a sudden, yeah. you kind of have, I guess, a new responsibility, which is an artist, that, in this case, a group of artists that are not yourself. And you have to decide how you're going to navigate. So how was that journey for you specifically? For me, mm. um, in the beginning, it was like, OK, yeah, let's try and balance this. I'm, mm. I'm going to be. I'm gonna be a rapper and I'm gonna be the CEO. Yeah. You know, so I'll do this. So good. You know, yeah. you know, whatever management. Ah, oh, we got this. Yeah, man. We yeah. got this. I got you guys. Yeah. yeah. But um, after a while, it yeah. became it became hard. Yeah. It became hard because the juggling was just was just not working. Mm -hmm. I needed to focus. to focus on one particular thing. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, <laughs> the name Superman yeah. carries a lot. So yeah. I. I started to feel like I'm I'm a man of the people for yeah, the people. Yeah. So I I've that's not the me. people first. Yeah. yeah. Help mold me a bit. So yeah. No, I hear that's you. That. Now speaking of that, I mean you you actually just alluded to something. The name Superman. What is the magical story behind this yeah, name yeah. Superman? Where does it come from? Hey. <laughs> so the name Superman has nothing to do with music at that particular point in yeah. time when it came up. Yeah. So we there's a thing called high ropes course. Yeah. And with the high ropes course, um, obviously it's high ropes. Yeah. Like it says, I don't know how much I can explain, but mm. you wear harnesses, a lot of safety helmets in yeah. the air. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I was working at a summer camp in the USA, yeah. probably about 99, bro. Okay. Working at a summer camp and um, There's a thing that we do where when you're done uh, with the high ropes course, you have to set it up yeah. and then you, you tear it down okay. when you're done. So yeah. we're doing tear down. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, one of my workmates um, made a bad decision mm. or didn't think when he did what he was doing. Mm. So there was a piece of rope that was missing from what he needed to be lowering mm -hmm. himself with yeah. and he started to free fall mm -hmm. but they had taught us how to like if something if someone starts dropping or something how to break a fall yeah. even if they were heavier than yeah. you yeah. taller than you yeah. um, bigger yeah, yeah. So, yeah so I my instincts kicked in mm -hmm. uh, I had gloves on and yeah. obviously this guy was six foot and I jumped back because we we were spotters when someone yeah. is coming down you spot them yeah so oh, i jumped like yeah extra yes, pair of hands case, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so i i jumped back yeah because i knew if i jumped back uh, by the time like he started free falling yeah. that force was gonna drag me okay and it dragged me bro yeah. like it, it must have dragged me for about eight meters wow like i, I was just going wow. and then when i got to a place where i couldn't move yeah. anymore it like i was trying to pull yeah. and it just started burning through my gloves but I was holding on ah. mm. yeah. and then it got too much because yeah. it burned through and started burning through my skin wow. and I just I let go yeah. but by the time I let go um, the guy was at a safe distance mm. I mean he he hit the ground hard with both feet mm. and shattered 
like his collarbone his backbone oh, everything man. yeah like so That's... we started convulsing and foaming at the mouth Oof. and everyone was panicking yeah so i i quickly we had radios on site so i quickly got a radio and said we have an emergency and believe it or not a helicopter was there within three minutes and it airlifted him out of uh, out of the place and so um when when we got to the hospital to see him uh, the doctor said my actions mm -hmm. saved his life uh, to break his fall enough yeah. for him to not shatter many and, other things and, and die, die yeah. and then to get the helicopter to, to get him so that within three minutes he was on his way to the hospital and getting treatment yeah. Yeah. so yeah there was a girl that was on site and she gave me a superman t-shirt <laughs> And what so, you did, yeah, the way you dived, <laughs> the way you dived, and then when I, I know I wore it, and when I got interviewed by the local newspaper in the USA, yeah. they they said local Superman saves life, wow. and I I came back to Zambia, yeah, and I it, when it, when did you come back by the way? The first time I came back was probably two thousand somewhere there, okay, yeah, okay. two thousand one maybe, yeah. yeah. So I came back and um. I used to rock that su that particular Superman T-shirt all the time, and so people were like, "Oh, dude, you can't mm. rock this T-shirt." They started to buy me T-shirts, mm. and I started to buy me T-shirts. Yeah, with the started, yeah. So then it was just like, oh, "Okay, so Superman, Superman." Yeah. And it, it was just a nickname that even with my parents stuck. Yeah. You fast forward to music, mm -hmm. and it was okay. So oh, okay, this guy is super. And then word started going around like, ah, he really, he really looks out for people. He really takes care of people. Mm -hmm. He really goes the extra mile. Mm -hmm. He really, so yeah. Whenever you have a problem in music, ask him yes. because he's super, Superman. Mm -hmm. and, and the name just, it's stuck. Mm -hmm. Now it's even in corporate clients everywhere, people. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy, man. I didn't even know. And I, like I was saying, I have people that for five, six years, yeah. We've had a close relationship. Maybe mm -hmm. you, they've even stayed at your house, yeah. and then after five years, this guy wakes up and says, "You know, I, I've never really known what your name What's is. What's your name? What's your name? Super Ace Angwana Pareji. You know, so yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah that was um, the story of the name, huh? Yeah, and so that name also defined my role in music, uh -huh. because then I started to feel like I I needed to be that guy who had traveled, who had seen what stages outside mm -hmm. the country looked like, looked like yeah. and could come and advise people here and say, no, you know, but when I went to a, I went to a Snoop Dogg concert, yeah. or I went to, yeah. I went to, uh, I went to a Method Man and Red Man concert. Mm -hmm. Crazy, bro. Yeah. yeah. But some of those things I would come back and say, mm -hmm. I, I would speak to event organizers and yeah. they were like, wow, mm -hmm. you, at that time I was still kind of young. So they would be like, wow, you have, so much like a vast knowledge mm -hmm. of this stuff and mm -hmm. so that really set me up in many ways even in the music industry mm -hmm. so yeah i remember teaching uh, critic and case star the art the art of battling yeah and i remember we, we started doing this thing where we would we would we would not prepare for the battle we would Semi prepare, mm -hmm. but then I I would say to critic, let's let's read the the opponent, especially if he goes first. Yeah. Then you're going to know what to do, and then we're going to take his words. Since yeah. you've become good at freestyle, take what he says and use that against, against him. him yeah. I bet you half his stuff is written or everything is written. written yeah. So if you use that against him, he won't expect that, and yeah, it will throw he won't him off. Be able to, yeah. And we started to like we started to build that reputation. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, these guys from so good. If you put them on a song. But if you battle against them, if you do what, mm. these guys will just they'll eat you alive. I remember Critic would always say, boss, can I take, can you put the plastics on the couches? Mm. Because then he was saying, I'm about to spill blood. Oh, oh yeah. So it was, it was really interesting. It was an interesting journey for me yeah. because uh, I started out as a rapper. Rapper, yeah. And then there was beef. But in, even after the beef and even after having a label, which was my label, mm -hmm. I never wanted to close myself off from anybody else. I always wanted to be a people person, a, a person for the people, a person mm -hmm. that always 
was ready to listen to, to someone that mm. needed help mm. or a person that was always helping. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I I put a lot of money, my own personal funds into. I remember traveling to shows with with like like I said with the the Dali so the ca- the chameleons yeah, yeah. or chameleon whatever yeah. you want to call him the mm-hmm. the mumpies yeah, yeah. and we would drive to certain places and I would use my car and use my gas and not feel any type of way because yeah. I I felt for me I was helping the industry grow mm-hmm. and I I've only discovered after many years mm-hmm. that yes I actually was because. <laughs> I was a, a, a link to many people, so mm-hmm. yeah, I just, I, I'm happy that that wasn't in vain. Mm-hmm. And if we can, like you know, focus a little bit on the establishment of so good, I guess, as a label or an imprint. Mm-hmm. What was the initial thinking or impetus behind that? Like, why? Because you you had been rapping, you're obviously in music, active already. Mm-hmm. Like, why decide to you know to 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 start? I, like take on this additional workload <laughs> you know and and now take responsibility for so much other stuff like what what was the reason that you decided to to do that uh, okay like i said in the beginning there was critic yeah k-star james sakala yeah. grant a lot of people yeah so when we got kicked out of that studio, studio yeah uh they were given an option yeah they were they were told uh, to go with me mm-hmm. like you can go with this dude who yeah. had nothing yeah uh, they were told to stay at the I label see. okay so they chose to go with me and for me i see that the act of yeah. the act of Facing someone not knowing you. yeah not knowing mm-hmm. what what not knowing what you're gonna have yeah. or yeah. what the future holds with you mm-hmm. and this other place had the dopest equipment mm-hmm. bro like mm-hmm. And these guys just said no man nah, we're just we're, we're gonna go with guy. you yeah and so that's why even when my dad saw that all those guys yeah. believed in me mm. you know he, uh, he did that and yeah. for me people like james sakala james sakala had come from mukushi bro yeah mukushi following a dream and then for his dream to just end like that so i figured you know if i uh, i couldn't facilitate for that at the other place if i could, could create something for these guys to make their music out of um, yeah. you know it might not it might not jump off as soon as mm-hmm. whatever yeah, but at least there would have been taking the first step steps. In, in, in alleviating whatever depression or whatever mm-hmm. you know because james uh, we we were a bunch of guys that just loved to make music mm-hmm. and you could tell from the first the first record that we made was called phoenix mm-hmm. phoenix ironically was mm. was on the top 10 on radio phoenix for a long time <laughs> i don't know if people i don't know if they thought that yeah because it was phoenix <laughs> it's an advert <laughs> but it was um it was because uh, we felt like we had rose from the, the ashes, ashes yeah you know yeah that's uh i remember critic rapped on that and he was he was passionate like i rapped on that i was passionate everyone like we were we were i think we were legit crying when we were recording the verses for that song and to listen to everybody's verse and so for me at that moment those people and how they were like they were like now they're just bringing a bunch of children for you they leave them at your doorstep oh no, yeah and look after just mm, like yeah after no this one wasn't even look after them it was just that at your doorstep just, so yeah, you yeah. can decide to go on with your life mm. you can report these children children say, lost. Oh, no no there's some lost there's children, some lost children. <laughs> so you move our welfare <laughs> let's take care of these or you know but i looked at those children and just no like, oh, so cute. you know what i mean no not literally but yeah, yeah of course of course I, of course i saw that and i like i just like i just and that's the problem with that Superman name again. Yeah, it's it just made me feel let go of you. like responsible. I, I couldn't let those down. people down. So I, I put it on myself. And yeah. that's why I think even when they gave me the leadership role, it was just like, okay, yeah, cool. cool. Yeah, uh, I'll do this because I don't I don't see anyone else, else here. doing it. Yeah, instead of doing it. So I'll, I'll do it. So it was out of necessity, but like you say, you rose to the occasion. Yeah, yeah? and then we, hey, we grew to love music. Like we love music, 
but to just have our own facility yeah. where we could wake up even at 3 a.m. And that's the story of how I wrote Mitomboa. Oh, really? Which was a, a hit yeah. for a long time. Yeah, man, and that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Please tell us about that. On, every radio on everything, program. everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> so, but for me, those are some of the important songs or mm. important moments mm. because it, it says a lot about the struggle, how uh, we woke up at 3 a.m. and Castro was making a beat. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, okay. And then we, I had leftover Vitumbuas from mm. the afternoon yeah. and I was hungry. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm, I have the plate on the speakers and there's fritters there and I'm eating and I'm like, mm-hmm, and the beat is playing. And then like, yeah, 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 and it sounded like a stupid idea <laughs> at the moment at, so at that crazy. particular point in time yeah. but and it was just a by the way song by the way because <laughs> it was we had like one or two hip-hop joints mm-hmm. and another song called party on the hill that i think was gonna be really big if yeah. we didn't put it on the same promo cd I, I as as and i remember taking it upon myself bro i i left the comfort of of, of home mm. hot water everything mm. and i i went and i i didn't drive where i was going i went on a bus i mm. went to the proper belt mm-hmm. we had burnt i don't know how many cds bro mm. and i remember my dad bought a stack mm. like three four stacks yeah. and i said we're going to give them to particular radio stations yeah. And I walked, bro. I would walk from neighborhood to neighborhood mm. in the copper belt, wow. drop off a CD somewhere. I, I remember coming back and my socks were just a mess, mm-hmm. bro, because I was walking so much in some of those smaller towns yeah. while everyone was at mm-hmm. home, yeah. which is why I was very passionate about when some of the guys started becoming lazy. And mm-hmm. I would always say, guys, look at what I did for Vitumbua. Yeah. I walked on my own and yeah. i went and i yeah, yeah. you guys have talent but i went out yeah, there yeah and i yeah. did this you know those little things mm-hmm. those little struggles in music so yeah that was Fidumbua time very interesting very interesting i didn't know that story of Fidumbua, so it's really yeah, dope to, it was, to, it was to it was an interesting that. time but like i said it was it was nice to be able to wake up at 3 a.m and say something has hit me oh i think i'm feeling musical and then to go into there and not have an idea have a pen on a paper and just see i like this beat let's see what we can do and then as fate would have it the song just blew up mm-hmm. blew up so it it, it it encouraged me as well and, and like because i know we had done zambezi versus hip-hop with mm-hmm. critic k-star and mbototo mm-hmm. yeah we tried to yeah. mix genres yeah and yeah, 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 so. yeah when did you know that the song was like out of here like what, what, like what event or what might have happened that you're like, man, okay, we officially have one. Ha- it just spiraled out of control. <laughs> like it just, it was, <laughs> you know, it was, you hear something in your studio and you're like, oh, right, we've recorded a song. And then there's a party next door and they're playing it. Like, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, wait, what? And then you go to the market and it's playing. <laughs> And then you go to a, a school and they have some event and it's playing. But it was because we cut across yeah. as many demographics as, as we could yeah. and included as many different age groups. And I remember seeing my dad bragging like, yeah, hey, you know, my son is the one that wrote that. <laughs> you know, like, oh, my dad now is bragging. You know, and uh, I remember uh one one lady he said look at this lady and she was with a kid yeah and the kid was vibing to the song yeah because there was stuff that he could relate to yeah but she was but vi- this is yeah. his grandmother and she was vibing to the song and because there's stuff, the stuff she, she could relate, relate to. to so and how would you because one of the themes that seems to come up a lot you know when i sit down with you know uh, ladies and gents such of you, uh, such as yourself who contributed to hip-hop in zambia a recurring theme seems to be this notion that in the early days, it was very much an uphill battle for Z hip hop practitioners of all sorts. So like, you know, the artists and anybody around them, like you're saying, you know, had to go, obviously everyone had to go extra miles, but it seemed like for the hip hop guys, it was, it extra, was extra. <laughs> it was, there were more miles, there were more miles in the extra <laughs> than might be expected otherwise. Yeah. Did, did, did you feel that way? You know, and, yes. and 
And how did that affect you? How did you deal with it? How did you overcome? You know, how did you find the persistence? You know, what was that personal journey like for you existing in a space where maybe it felt like the odds might be stacked against you? Um, I think at the time we were doing hip hop or we had started before, yeah. before I even met Critic and all those guys, yeah. I think hip hop was almost a taboo. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was frowned upon, mm -hmm. it was looked down on because of where the influence was coming, coming from, from yeah. coming from the West. Yeah. So if you were trying to do that, you were like those guys. Mm -hmm. And I, it just wasn't accepted as easily as it should have been accepted. Mm -hmm. And that's why by the time crisis dropped officer in, in charge, charge yeah. it was uh, that's why I'm saying a lot of people drop music before that, but yeah. they'll always call him the Godfather because he broke through uh, at, a, at a time when people needed hope. Yeah. You know, he broke through with yeah. officer in charge, John, and they yeah. were like, "Oh wow, we can do this here, yeah. and people will love it." Yeah. You know, it, it, it was funny because I went, I was at school with um, Exile yeah. or Israel, yeah. and he used to rap a lot at school, bro. Yeah. But he, he decided not to rap because yeah. rap was not working it's out not working, yeah. but if you hear exile rap bro, yeah, like, man. it's still gonna take some people bro. in this day and age yeah. to the cleaners to yeah, the market for sure man so, for sure uh it was hard because we tried to rap and they were just like oh no that's not uh, that's not zambian music those things oh, can't no, work here can't work here <laughs> those things oh, no anymore of us snoop dog <laughs> <laughs> So for a long time, it felt like we were just making music for each other. Do you think that that psychology, that resistance that you characterize as, are you Snoop Dogg? Why are you trying to what? Do you think that that has changed? Do you think like the the general reception today that doesn't read things that way? I think the they've accepted. They've accepted a lot of people. They have accepted. I. I'll even start with you. Mm. They've, they've accepted Tanya Bao. You know, it's really, it's really been been interesting because we have Tanya Bao. We have, we have people now listen to more of like, of that hip hop critic, mm. hip hop, hip hop yeah, critic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, critic. You know, so I think it has sort of changed yeah. because you. I mean, you can even bring in people like Sam for the Great. So. I know on a, the, the Wave record, your record yeah. made waves. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I love doing that. But like that record made waves and and people were like, oh, wow, you know, this we can actually this might actually be what we might need to break or cross borders or break the international market. And then Sampa the Great comes yeah, along and yeah. he wins one or two awards. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, that's uh, that's our, our very old Sampa. Oh, come on, Surya. Oh, no, Chanda is on the South African charts or on the whatever charts. Oh, no, he's playing on, on Trace TV. Oh, come here, Surya. You guys said he was Western, you know what I mean? So yeah. I feel like there's some things that have helped mm. but generally even without those things i think they've accepted okay. they've accepted hip hop okay. more because there's a, a lot more of the people that appreciate it have stepped out of the shadows i see a lot of the people were hiding in the shadows I see. because, because of, of the yeah i see the association and the connotations yes. so word, now yeah. and, and and then now we discovered that the, the buying culture is actually stronger with those people that, that are real hip hop fans or anything. So you have an album, these are the people that are buying. Buy. Everyone else wants, ah, oh, my download G, put up on my blog sites. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I'd like to ask a question because I feel you're uniquely placed to give a very, I think, nuanced view on this. Um, you know, most of the time I sit down with somebody, it tends to be an artist and the specificity about an artist is an artist creates art. So an artist is primarily concerned with a product, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so when we talk about the music business, I'm very intrigued or interested in your perspective because aside from a product, there's obviously a whole value chain, you know, around things that need to happen for a thriving ecosystem to be in place. And I'm very curious about how you feel the music industry, ergo, you know, Zambian hip hop by extension has evolved over the time you've been active, you know, whether it's starting so good and back in 09 until to date, you know, whatever 
time period you're comfortable with, but just your thinking on that progression. Okay, I'll start by saying I like what you said about an artist having to to create a, a product, mm. but I'll go one further and say an artist has also become the product. The product, that's true. That and is I mean, true. That is so true. I, that I is say true. this because that is true. Um, that is true. from the time so good. Uh, or even before so good inception everything uh that commercialized side was was almost non-existent mm -hmm. and now it's uh it's skyrocketed i say this because uh, i've got a good example in chef mm -hmm. i manage chef 187 yeah. um and uh like i started like i said i started out as a fan yeah. and we, i was managing i was in the background yeah. but when i I would watch him just make the product. Yeah. Uh, make the product, go to the studio, mm -hmm. okay, and, and let's uh -huh. get people to listen to it. Let's yeah. get people to listen Consume to it. Consume the product, yeah. And then um, I started to think, I, I say, why make it just about the product? Mm -hmm. Why not make him the product? Yeah. So that, yes, people want to consume the music, but why not make people want to, to use him for other things? Yeah. And I remember writing a proposal to to infinix yeah. at that particular point in time to say look i have this product and mm -hmm. these are the numbers that mm -hmm. he has and yeah. this is what he can do for yeah. you but mm -hmm. this is what i need you to do for, for us. us yeah and uh, it, i was just going out on a limb mm -hmm. and it, it ended up working mm -hmm. and i was like whoa an interesting part is that the blueprint that i created is what they started using for artists Other artists. After chef. So it was, of course, they fine-tuned it, but yeah. it was almost the same deal. It yeah. was okay, a monthly payment, yeah. a flagship phone, yeah. a whatever, whatever, mm. a, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and we've seen that the more we we started to make turn him into a product, the more people now started coming because they were like, oh, we can use this guy for this. So you have uh, ISP, these internet service yeah. providers mm -hmm. lining up. So I think it has transcended from just being about the music mm -hmm. to using the music to <laughs> yeah. to make it about other other things. Yeah. No, I think that's the a smart that's a, ones got it. No, I, I think that's a. a but yeah, music is everywhere, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, and uh, it's it's been commercialized or become a brand so much that mm -hmm. now everyone is paying. I know we just haven't reached the level of uh, of uh, Mercedes or BMW yeah. giving you a different BMW every month and mm -hmm. saying, "Okay, we want you to drive around in it mm -hmm. and just represent us." Represent but I think us, yeah. I think we're I think the, the change has uh, now it has caught fire. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think the rate might be a bit more rapid than yeah. it was okay. in that period because that period was just music, music, and then. We were okay with just putting our music and being heard. We just wanted to be heard, man. We just wanted to be, yo, I was on radio, Chanda, did you? Ah, bro, I was on radio. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we're even, uh, we have our music online and we're selling our music now mm -hmm. because it's more than just about radio. Yeah. Even some of the radio stations are struggling to get the music because now we want to sell the music yeah. because yeah. that's how much it has evolved wow. and commercialized. Mm -hmm. But of course, with fans, they'll still make the radio station go and look for your music mm -hmm. if you haven't given them your music and you still get played. So, yeah, it's interesting. And what do you think the next iteration looks like? This is a very, very music business type of question, but because of who you are and where you sit, I think it's an appropriate one to ask. But what do you think then the next iteration of the industry looks like in the sense that, you know, I think we had a discussion about you know, the power of the consumer market, mm -hmm. you know, and how mm -hmm. in some of the places maybe we would uh, wish to emulate certain aspects of or aspire to their kind of level of achievement from commercial outcomes for artists and the arts in general. Uh, one of the big drivers of that is the power of the consumer market. You know, what, what do you think or how do we feasibly, like in your head, what do you think is the roadmap for the Zambian music industry becoming one day a first tier uh, market in terms of arts and entertainment well how how do we get there you know do, do we just need to wait for the gdp per capita to to go up over 20 30 years or are there other things you see that could potentially 
help us leapfrog because we're starting uh, kind of on a, on a back foot when you compare us with the mm. first world. Um, so is there a way that we leapfrog in terms of arts and entertainment or it's just patience? Uh, I think it will need a just dedicated effort from everyone that plays a role in the industry. So you spoke about the consumers. So the consumers are going to are going to have to make it look look like, or not make it look like, mm. but make it happen yeah. because they're going to have to say, okay, we want to consume this product, product. more. So the demand for up. that product mm. goes up. Mm. So if uh, Coca Cola is dealing with mm. with uh, with Chanda Bao and uh, only five people are buying the, the Coca Cola. And it's, it's tricky for Coca-Cola because from head office there, yeah, yeah, they're right. gonna they're gonna tell you no. In Zambia, the market is not yet ready. Ready for, for. you see. So the consumers <laughs> now have to also make this market ready yeah, by yeah. saying, "Oh wow, one of our own growth. This is the Coca-Cola ambassador. Mm. Let's go Bye. all out." You yeah. know what I mean? Um, the artists mm. have to become more professional mm. with what they do because they have to know that okay if i'm i'm representing a brand then there's certain things that i can't do because unfortunately zambian artists will always just be grouped as zambian artists yeah. sometimes some people don't take the time to separate yeah man. so when the other people act a fool or it do affects, yeah, yeah it affects everyone, everyone else mm -hmm. because it's like oh no we can't work with chanda because yeah. super, i'm a, yeah, I'm a super, zambian artist because <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it's just, it's just, yeah. Uh, even, I mean, the whole team, like management, everybody needs mm. to get involved because mm. we're going to have to push an agenda. Like I said, I, I wrote the proposal to Infinix. Yeah. You know, I spoke to a guy called Douglas who was working at that time. Yeah. But it took me mm. to write that proposal. If I sat mm -hmm. and waited for that proposal, it would have never, never come. Never come, exactly. It yeah. would have never come. Yeah. But I, I took that step. So, Everyone is going to have to take a step. The mm. consumers are going to have to buy more, yeah. or yeah. or or go on the pages and say, "Ah, we want more of this." Yeah. You know, the yeah. the artists are going to have to, be, and the artists also have to keep evolving. Mm -hmm. It's not just about being who you were in 1999. Mm -hmm. You know, you evolve uh, without compromising your <laughs> brand or compromising <laughs> yourself. Of course, <laughs> you're not just going to uh, mumble rap because <laughs> now everyone is mumble rapping you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. yeah it's just how how do you meet that and stay relevant yeah so i i, I feel like it's just it's going to take a concentrated effort from everyone and everyone just saying we're moving in this direction because movement is anywhere yeah, movement can be exactly, behind yeah. but everyone just say okay this is the goal the industry has to grow i'm not going to be jealous when chanda uh, look Nigeria, bro. Mm. Nigeria, they will bicker, they will fight each mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. when they have to. But mm. when it comes to things like um, international markets, when they're voting, mm -hmm. everyone yeah. will just be like, okay, this guy is carrying the Nigerian flag. Like, it's like when you're playing football at the World Cup, the yeah. way Zambia rallies behind yeah, the Zambian the national Zambian team. team yeah. So why can't you treat Chanda like he's the Zambian national team when he's at the awards? Mm. Because it's not Slap D mm. who's at the awards, then we're not going to, we're not going to vote for Chanda. But if everyone and this is a small country, yeah, and that's the population the is small. That's the thing. But man. if if everyone just rallied and said, Oh bro, look. It's Chanda. As long as he's a Zambian. I don't like Chanda, but in Zambia. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a W for Zambia. Mm -hmm. And everyone focused on that. So if we can put aside all those little petty things. <laughs> Look at um, every time Patson Daka has yeah. a poll. Yeah. Or, and, and people are supposed yeah. to vote. It, everyone goes to vote. Who has beaten Patson Daka in the last? Nobody. <laughs> Because people are voting. We bro. rally behind him. We're man. all rallying behind him. Oh, yeah. he's such a nice guy. Let's rally behind him. He's Zambian. A Zambian in Aust Austria. You know mm. what I mean? Why can't we do, do that, that for Chanda? Why can't we do that for, for Slap D? Why yeah. can't we do that for, for Machu too? Why don't we do that for, for Killer? For yeah. Shep, yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Because uh, that way we get recognized. And the funny thing about this, 
is it's a it's a ripple effect yeah so you bicker and you don't do all those things mm -hmm. and then we don't grow exactly. on the international exactly. market exactly we don't so grow yeah. on the international market we don't get recognized exactly. we don't get recognized we don't get invited to grammy events we don't get it's it's so many things bro it's, it's we don't get international events and this is why now zambians most of the time are, no he went to australia <laughs> he's going to perform in a place <laughs> full of zambians you know what i mean yeah, yeah he went to whatever but it's because we we're not giving we're not everybody has to do their yeah. part bro. that's what it's gonna be it's going to have to be about the music or the industry before anything for yes. it to grow uh, me to say okay yeah like i said chanda robbed me the wrong way yesterday mm -hmm. but he, the zambia needs my vote let me be a patriot mm -hmm. let me mm -hmm. yeah nah man i agree because you know it's funny because this is definitely a theme that's come up before and i'm sure you've even seen like on twitter there's always all these like back and forth debates consumer some consumers think they support enough mm -hmm. so the artists need to do more there's just like yeah. this blame game and passing yeah. the buck or whatever but i definitely think like you say like everyone has to take a step you know i don't think anyone can be like no me i've done my part no, no. <laughs> so now it's i'm waiting for one of you artists it's always one of you artists yeah, one of you one artists, of you artists and i'm like guys i'm like to be fair I, I just if i give a random example i say rich busy's music is there on spotify he's not going to go and stream it one million times himself he needs you and me and all of us you know to do to to do our part right for for the wider you know ecosystem and, and as you say there's this ripple effect so if we don't if we fail to apply what i understand is the spirit of ubuntu mm. to some of these things yeah we're shooting our own selves <laughs> in the foot you know so we keep pulling ourselves back double hp man before he died mm -hmm. he came to so good uh, we recorded some stuff i yeah. still have the stuff but yeah. he said to me he was in shock mm. like he was in shock he was just like i didn't even know like there was such music in zambia mm -hmm. my king wow yeah. wow because and then he was saying oh we listen to oh when we ask like certain stations or whatever we get a call and say who can we work with when we come to yeah, Zambia yeah. they show us different things but this is the type of stuff that we want to do like, yeah. you know but you take that music there and then the consumers are saying that music is terrible yeah and then the radio station doesn't play that music, music. and then the poll goes and your music is not on that not but these that. guys come and they're like wow wow yeah 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 so people don't even know that we we even went to perform at some festivals in South Africa and they didn't call any any of the the, the artists they perceive as being the biggest artists because they just didn't relate to that music or they just didn't appreciate it the way it should be it's appreciated here. Mm -hmm. So we need to to balance it up a bit. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with you yeah. and I agree. I, and I think it's I, I don't know what the like key kind of psychological trigger is, but I mean one way I conceptualize it is I think one of the ideas that needs to be eroded or unlearned is this notion or feeling or sentiment that there's somehow not enough room for everyone or something. Like sometimes I get the, the the vibe that for you to be defensive or jealous about your support would mean you feel that that you don't there's not enough support you know to go around you know yeah. which for me is an odd idea because I actually think it's the opposite. Is the more we all lend our support to as many Zambian artists, hip hop artists, all kinds of artists, ventures, businesses, it's yes, a place of all everything. walks of life. It's net positive for us for, you know what I mean? So it's, it, it's, it's, it's just an odd psychological feature that I find that we need to work on <laughs> because it's going to hold us back if we don't. Well, that, yeah. How you basically divide your ventures. Cause obviously you're also, an, you know, front and center of managing Sheffy. I'm yeah. sure there might even be more artists. Yeah, there's more artists okay. actually that are not even on so good. And okay. then even some of the artists on so good. Um, I think my my laptop, man. My laptop <laughs> is my, mm, that's my right. laptop and my reminders mm. because even sh managing Chef alone yeah. is a handful. Mm. Like it, it's overwhelming. It's ridiculous, bro. It's like, so I, I try with every person like for Sheffy, as soon as I get a booking, I'll type it into the calendar so that I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of it. Because sometimes we we used to forget that we have an event. Yeah. Oh, we're supposed to be in Dollar today, bro. And mm. Kingston, we agreed, though. We've got a down payment for yeah. this. So I make sure yeah. 
I, I keep a lot of those messages and I, I leave a lot of stuff on my desktop that says, for this month, yeah, this, this is, is what we have to do. For this artist, you yeah. know, go to the next artist and say, this is what I need to do. And the next artist and keep checking, keep checking on every artist uh, individually so that uh, they don't feel like, well, this person is getting more attention. attention yeah. Them, yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a handful, but I, I think I've figured out a system. Yeah within myself and I've and then I've created a, a like groups where I know okay in this group like this is a chefy group so we share all the dates so that we're not double booking and we're yeah. not doing this and mm -hmm. then this is what we're doing this week and this is what we need to do so I, even if I don't have my laptop at that particular moment I can always go into the group and scroll up and I'll go into a group that says maybe Afunika and scroll up mm -hmm. Afunika oh we're supposed to shoot a video mm -hmm. he has a wedding on the 1st of August. Yes, this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's definitely much appreciated. Mm -hmm. If you would, would you would you share any, and if there's, if it's hard to pick one, then, then that's fine. You can maybe do two or three, but a top Zambian hip hop memory for you. A time when you were either immensely proud, immensely satisfied at something Zambian hip hop that you won't forget. Uh, the festival, the festival in South Africa mm -hmm. with Double HP yeah. is one for me because yeah. we shared um, the critic and James Sakala and yeah. myself. We went, yeah, that's awesome, and uh, and we shared a we shared a a block of apartments or so with um, Mi <laughs> Sako D yeah. um, Manifest. No, that's crazy. Bro, like we that had is, some yeah, some top, top tier. Yeah. African, African MCs, MCs yeah. yeah. So I feel like that was a great moment for me because it proved that, and those people respected us. So mm. it proved that we can be among yeah. that list. Yeah. We just need to figure out what we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, another moment was Coke Studios with yeah, Chef. Yeah, uh, Coke Studios awesome. with Chef. That was awesome. To be, to speak a language that people don't, uh, might not understand, but for them to go and love what he was doing and love the type of person that he is yeah. i think kind of gave me hope like yeah. we can we can do things whether it's on this side or whether it's on this side bro but it's just it's up to us how are we getting heard what are we doing to get heard how are we pushing the product yeah. are we adding enough quality to where south african tv wants to play it yeah. or to where nigerian tv wants to play it yeah. or are they saying this video is not up to par yeah. so we need to also as people that are doing these things we need to know like what um what format should this be sent in or what format yeah. should it be at you know and those are the little details yeah. that we're not finding out you yeah. know what i mean yeah. which is uh, we just need to do the extra extras like you said yeah but those are proud moments and there's a lot of proud moments even locally but yeah. i i feel like yeah those two deserve mention huh? yeah that's awesome so superman it's been you know, wonderful discussion, man. And and I was just thinking maybe on a parting note, what would be a nice way to kind of, you know, round off what we've talked about is how you would characterize, you know, your your personal lessons and communicate those to somebody younger, maybe even a younger you, hypothetically, um, or a younger person out there, you know, in Zambian hip hop or Zambian music. From your learnings and your experience, what would you what would you offer up as a gem? I think allow yourself to make mistakes uh, first and foremost. Um, I think for me, I say that because every mistake that I made <laughs> was a, a very defining or played a very defining role in, in, the, in the person that I am. So I was never good at management. I was never good at running stuff. I had to make a lot of mistakes in order to know that I shouldn't do that. So I think it would apply even even to music. Don't be afraid to take risks. I I wouldn't have started this if I wasn't afraid to take a risk. You know, if I if I thought less of myself and said I'm not going to be able to do it, I would have never even reached the point where I interact with uh, with, uh, with international artists. You know, or uh, their managers or people like Coke Studios if I was like, I'm too small. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid to take a risk. Um, learn from your mistakes. And then uh, I know when you're starting out, it's uh, you, It's usually about you, you and you, but uh, 
going forward, try to create a team, especially a team of people that understand you and you understand them. Because I, I'll say that again, I'll give an example with Chef. There's some things that I can say because I, I know what he needs to do and he might not know or agree with it. And we, we argue sometimes, yeah. but that argument never messes anything up we we get straight back to talking business, yeah, because yeah. we know it's, it's business as usual so get people that understand you because when you when you rebuke them or they rebuke you you know it's coming from a, a place Good of place, love yeah. and it's, it's it's in order for you to grow um, and then the, i think yeah a team is important because one individual sometimes might be difficult so there's people that could specialize in certain of course there's the one main person there's the superman <laughs> but yeah get some people to help you with certain things and, and learn your lessons from each and everyone yeah. and then lastly man just do your part do your part for the industry man mm -hmm. do your part do your part in whether you're gonna be you're gonna help improve the rap the rap game the hip-hop game you're gonna you're gonna be the best manager that you can be you're yeah. gonna you're gonna buy the music of other people and you're you're going to try and stop any negative energy that's going around in the industry man because that's what i try to do and that's why you can take me to any camp put me across any board and the love is still it's crazy so yeah i feel like i'm i'm a connect to the industry sometimes and if more people can be like that uh we can move as a unit like we can we can go places man we can uh, the culture especially especially hip-hop is big in zambia but it, it's gonna take people getting off their behinds and saying okay what can we do let's do a let's do an event for the culture and people knowing that some people might not get paid and some people get paid but if it's going to forward yeah. the culture then let's do it you know what i mean i feel that's how i feel personally it's about getting up and doing your part uh, and being the change you want to see mm -hmm. not just saying ah the zambians the market shiny <laughs> you know true yeah true so. true man it's been an extreme pleasure to sit down with you I still no. feel like I haven't the, said anything you, you scratch, I need to yeah. say, but yeah, we have to Imagine the this is the issue. So uh, I, we might. We're gonna I, need you. We're gonna have I, dedicate a season to <laughs> to Superman. Yeah, no, I I really appreciate having me on this, and I I just hope I've said enough for someone to pick something, something sensible yeah. out of it, and and to for someone to be helped. You know, even if they even if they don't like me, but for someone to be helped and for their brand to evolve and for them to not be afraid of letting their brand evolve. Yeah. No man, it's been extreme pleasure, man. Very grateful for all you've done for the game. You know, a game that uh you know I obviously participate in and uh all this is always very illuminating for me because I learn about some of the you know, the the road, the journey, the ups, the downs, the walking around the radio stations and you know, in the copper belt and things like that. And you, you know, it, it gives you new insight and yeah. further appreciation for what somebody represents. And I think that's really important. I think we need to get to a place in our culture where we're celebrating each other more often. So, that's right. that's you know, true. so today, man, I want to celebrate you, what you've done for the game, man. Much appreciation, bro. It's been my pleasure to sit down hey, with you. Thank you so much, bro. Peace, bro. This was another episode of Zambian Hip Hop History, guys. It's been a pleasure rocking out with you. Peace. Peace.